Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And thank you so much for joining us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for wanting to be with us. We pray that you would help us to learn how to have a better personal relationship with you through a knowledge of you. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Our text for today is found in uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Again, that's 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. And I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It reads, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. Our subject for today is to know him, to know him, even as I have, am known. That's his goal for me, and I want for me what he wants for me, to know him. Now, I must admit that I've been growing more perplexed and bewildered lately. And I concluded that that's why Jesus said to his disciples, in Mark chapter 6, verse 31, that they needed to take a break. In the, in the, in the uh, story where Jesus fed uh, 5,000 with uh, two little fish and five barley loaves, uh, this is a story that comes before uh, Mark chapter 6, verse 30 and 31. Those verses says, the apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away for yourself, by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. They were having to mix not only business with pleasure, but they were having to eat while working. That's too busy. These verses does not appear in any of the other gospels. Jesus provided rest for his busy servants. That's good to know. By leading them out to a lonely area of wilderness where the crowd, that were now greater than ever, were not as likely to follow them even though they ran and got there before them. It's interesting that Mark did not mention Jesus' evaluation of the disciples' work, but mentioned his consideration for them as workers. For continued effectiveness, every worker must know, uh, m m every worker must now and then stop to take a break and relax a little. This essentially entails an opportunity to clear the mind and regain our focus. When we listen too intently to what people around us are saying, concerning their personal affairs, it's easy to lose focus on what the Lord is saying to us. I rediscovered that knowing God is the best way to help any of us care for those that we are charged with the care of. God wants to be with us. And I'm learning that I'm so much better off with him. To know that God wants to be with us also means that he wants to provide all we need and more. And maybe that's why Jesus emphasized that he would be with us always, even until the end of the world. 
Knowing God is knowing the only one that can sustain us through times such as the pandemic that we are faced with today. Knowing God and knowing him personally is having a personal relationship with the one that is able to keep a couple or friends together in a rocky relationship. Sometimes God will allow trials and tribulations to enter a marital relationship or friend relationships to remind us that it is his love and principles that binds us together. And that's true in our relationship with Jesus and with friends and even with our enemies. How else can we love even our enemies without the love of God working through us and in us and his principles that we're living by that guides us into loving even our enemies, having peace with our enemies. Hallelujah. Uh, last week, I think it was, or sometime in the distant past, not too distant past, uh, the company Nike closed its corporate office for a week, giving employees a break to help them avoid burnout. Mount Sinai uh, for some years now, have been shutting down all of our weekly functions during the month of December to give the membership a break. There was a man named Vance Havner that said, if you don't come apart and rest, you will come apart. In other words, you'll fall apart, break up, uh, uh, have a, you, you'll have a, uh, well, you know what I'm talking about. You, you, you just lose it. The body needs rest to be effective. I have a rule that I try to follow, and I try to never go into a meeting, especially a church meeting, without proper rest. I learned while working for the FAA that I can endure hardship longer with proper rest. The great D.L. Moody, who is building his Sunday school in Chicago, while he was doing so, children came to him from everywhere across the city. They often passed many other churches and Sunday schools to be with Mr. Moody. When asked, why he would walk so far to attend Mr. Moody's Sunday school, one boy replied, because they love a fella over there. The children could tell the difference. And the people that we're trying to interact with can tell the difference. Love shines through problems and hardships when proper rest is achieved. It's easy to solve relational problems when love is clearly exhibited. The disciples had two suggestions in Mark chapter uh, six for solving one of their problems. Either send the people away to find their own food or raise enough money to buy bread for everybody. As far as the disciples were concerned, they were in the wrong place at the wrong time and nothing could be done. With that kind of approach, they would have made ideal committee members. Someone has defined a committee as a group of people who, who individually can do nothing and collectively decides that nothing can be done. But Jesus, because he was conscious of the need of proper rest, 
was able to, to come up with the right solution, which was to rely on his heavenly father to make a way out of nowhere. To get to know someone, we must spend time with them. And that begins the sure way that we can get to know God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, our Comforter and Guide. They are the Trinity. They are three in one. They are together. And if we're to be together in any way, any endeavor, Proper rest is where it begins, and getting to know God. Jesus came to show us the Father. In John chapter uh, 14, verses 1 through 12, where he makes the statement and paints the picture saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And this is the English Standard Version, I believe. Uh, in my Father's house are many rooms. Now, I'm sure it's the English Standard Version because uh, the King James Version says many mansions. It goes on to say, if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? Look at how, how, how not only then and now does God want to be with us, but he's making provisions for our future in eternity to be with him. Jesus says, if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And you know the way to where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known the Father also. And from now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it's enough for us. Jesus said to Philip, have I been with you so long and you still still don't know me, Philip? Whosoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? I wonder if there's anybody that have been attending church Sunday after Sunday, Bible study throughout the week, midweek service, and still don't know the Father. How can you be with somebody? How can you want to be with somebody that you do not know? Verse 10 says, Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. I wish I had time to deal with that a little bit. Let me get ready to close. Genesis, the, the Garden of Eden, the law it was given to guide us in relationship with God without a set of standards to live by, there will be no commitment, no devotion, no order in the relationship to sustain it. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17 said, And God commanded man, saying, Of all the trees of the garden thou mayest freely eat, 
But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat thereof. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. God wants us to have a sustaining relationship with him. The story of Joseph, Abraham's grandson, tells us that God will take care of us and bless us even during tough times, tough situations, trials and tribulations. The story of Abraham reminds us that God will provide. He's our Jehovah Jireh. The story of, of David in Psalms 23 informs us of our personal need for God as our shepherd. And Jesus comes along and reminds us that he is the good shepherd. God's unconditional love covers our a multitude of our sins and motivates God to favor us. And Jesus, our good shepherd, laid down his life for us one Friday. He died on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. For you and me, he died. They took him down and buried him in a borrowed tomb and he was there for three Hebrew days and then, wait for it, wait for it, he rose early the third day morning with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. Let me close with this little, little, little tidbit that I ran across. There was a group named the Teddy Bears that put out a song in 1958 title, To Know Him is to Love Him. It goes something like this. To know him, know, know, know him, is to love, love, love him. Just see that smile makes my life worthwhile to know, know, know him, is to love, love, love him. And I do, I do, I do. Oh, I'll be good to him. I'll bring joy to him. Oh, everyone says there'll come a day when I'll walk alongside him. To know him is to love, love, love him. And I do, I really do. I do. That's it for this Sunday, and may God bless you through his word once again. God's word is much like a prescription that you receive from the pharmacist that the doctor writes out for you. If you don't use it, it won't do you any good. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for wanting to be with us and giving us a path to know you. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. Take care. Be careful. Don't forget we're back in the mask up uh, situation and it's pretty evident that mask, wearing a mask does work. Uh, take care. I love you. God loves you. And we'll get together again on up the road. Bye-bye.